Good morning everyone. Welcome to part three in my Dano 2 kit rebuild and now upgrade. In this episode you'll see the whole kit come together. I'll show you some items which aren't normally in the O2 kit but I think are useful additions so that your kit's ready to use all the time and is as versatile as possible. The kit we've got is the Dan Rescue Pack Extended Care. Well, at least it's the 1994 version of it anyway. You can see here all the components. Um, this is not what comes normally with the, the Extended Care Kit. I've added some extra items which you'll see, but we'll start with the box. What have I done here? Well, this foam was in good condition, but it was a bit smelly. It hadn't been dried out, so we washed it fully with detergent. It took a couple of days to um, dry out. And then we sanitize it, just spray it, leave it to come off and what I suggest is every time you check the box take everything out let the box air if it is wet at all wash it just with detergent let the foam dry in the Sun or in a warm room it will take some time and then give it a spray with Lysol I use Dettol I'm from Britain of course so I use Dettol so now we've got our our box ready um, there is a seal we'll change at the end, we'll come on to that, but I just want to go through what we've done to the cylinder. You saw in, in part two how we'd refurbished the cylinder, and I did say I'd, I'd talk more about it in part three. So what have we done? We've protected the orifice. These orifices are normally left open and they can get contaminants in, they can get damaged. What we've done is we've sourced these um, caps from a company in America called CA plugs and this is the this is the SVS 2W to buy these you've got to buy them in quite significant numbers I think for this particular plug you've got to buy 3,000 I got some samples from them they very kindly gave me two of these and some other samples I'm going to show you if you want these I suggest you club together with a few dive operators clubs or people who've got oxygen kits and buy the 3000 I think it's hundred and fifty three hundred and fifty seven dollars or something failing that if you can't organize that then what you could use is PVC electrical tape like you use on tanks a lot and just wrap it around once but then when you take that off you need gonna need quickly to wipe it with an alcohol swab so that's not the ideal situation but remember now we're a lot of us are nitrox trained and we've learned about oxygen these are med designed for medical use they're not designed for use on beaches on dive boats so really we want to keep that orifice as clean as possible so what else have we done on the tank you know that it's been hydro tested we've also stamped on there m22 we measured the water capacity we know it's 153 bar or 2216 psi working pressure or charge pressure so we determined it's a 22 cubic feet so the DOT regulations allow us to stamp on the collar for future use. People now know this is a 22 cubic feet cylinder. We've got on the cylinder now a little small sticker. I don't have a big one, but we're in the, in the Middle East. We're covered by Dan Europe. So we've got the telephone number for Dan Europe on there. We've got an oxygen sticker on the cylinder. And then this is quite important. So here we check the pressure every month. So there it says refill, 153 bar and BD. That's me who checked it. We've also got some information, a sticker that I've made up, which tells you the fill pressure, tells you the volume, tells you the available O2 in liters, 612. So it's slightly less than a, a, a Jumbo D, which I think the Jumbo Ds are about 648. And then what we've put on here, how long the O2 will last. So we've assumed 10 liters per minute on the demand valve, and 15 litres per minute on the non rebreather mass. So you see on demand for one casualty, we'll have about 61 minutes duration. If we're on the non rebreather mask at 15 litres a minute, we've got 40 minutes. And if we've got two casualties, that drops to 24. Why are they both the same? Because one's going to be on the demand regulator and one's going to be on the non rebreather. So that's the cylinder cupboard. So that can now go into the box. The next item we're going to put in the box is the first stage regulator. And you'll see I've got it in this heavy duty plastic bag. These are not freezer bags or sandwich bags from the supermarket. These are specially sourced bags, which are heavier duty. They weren't that expensive and they'll last me quite some time. So let's open the bag. Why do I keep it in a bag? Because you remember this regulator had suffered from saltwater corrosion. 
We managed to recover it any more and we would have had to replace the regulator. So let's take it out. This is silica gel desiccant. And what does that do? It absorbs moisture. And what I've got here, color changing silica gel, which is now orange. When it's fully absorbed with water, it will go green. And that's the preferred type to use. If you can't get color changing silica gel packages, then just buy the regular and then change it every time you do an inspection on the kit. I recommend that you inspect your kit monthly so you know it's ready to use. You should be checking the cylinder pressure anyway, so you do need to open the box. So my recommendation, check monthly. If you've got color changing silica gel, fine, wait till it goes green. And that also tells you you've had some moisture around, which at that stage would be pretty serious because you've got it inside this plastic bag. You've got a sealed box. So then you need to go through all the items in the box. So we'll put that back in to the plastic bag. Let's talk about what we've done to the regulator. Okay, this is very important. This opens your cylinder without this, it's gonna be very difficult. People will use pliers adjustable, but you'll lose time. And then what have we done on the regulator? We've kept it kind of past disassembled because as you'll see, you can easily and quickly put the hose on. But what we've done, which doesn't come with the standard regulator, we've protected every orifice. Now, I was quite fortunate, if you look in part two, the workshop at Alboom Diving had these from old hoses or new hoses, and they'd kept these. This was from a regulator, part from a piston, and we've managed to protect these. If you can't get hold of those, I did mention before CA plug, and they do have fittings that will fit. Again, there are minimum quantities you've got to buy, one for the orifice, and then there's a, a little black one that protects the constant flow orifice. Remember, this is where you connect your demand valve. This is where you connect your non-rebreather mask. You saw in the earlier videos, or if you didn't, you know, normally there's no protection here for the washer to stop any debris going in. Again, we're, we're in a diving environment. We might be doing rescue diver courses on the beach. We might be in a wet boat. We want to keep this as clean as possible. And this was just a little spacer that I machined out of nylon with a little hole there to go over the doughty washer and a little locator hole at the back. If anybody wants details of this, I can, I can do a little drawing. Just email me, more than happy to share details. And I think uh, engineering nylon or is the best material, nice and light. So there you see, fully protected. You know it's serviced, you saw in part two, we've done that into its plastic bag and in it goes. So let's talk about the demand valve. Similarly, it's, uh, I'm not gonna take it out, but you see it's there ready to use. When we fix it to the first stage we, we only do it finger tight and we can do it very quick and I, I think it's better to keep it separate but what I do want to talk about now what do we put as a, a mask on this end so this goes in the box there we go you saw in part one that the old Dan kits used to come with a true fit mask they no, no longer supply them with those they prefer the pocket mask this is an, a service kit I bought for the box and kit from Dan USA. So the True Fit mask, you'll see when I'm still using these in my Boat O2 kit, which will, which will be the next video in the Oxygen series, and the final one, I guess, in the Oxygen series. And let's go through the sort of service kit. They've got several. This is the one that comes with the seal for the box as well. So let's take the seal out first. So this is, you saw, again, in, in part one, those of you who saw it, all this had bailed, it had gone yellow, the silicon oil was coming out. You see, these can be used for oxygen assisted CPR. You can just put the oxygen constant flow on there, 15 or 25 litres per minute, and do oxygen assisted CPR. Or this just connects to the demand valve, and that the casualty can then put that over their head and breathe oxygen. I think that the, the thinking behind is that this gives a much better seal on the face. There has been some research which said non rebreather masks were better than demand valves because of the seal on there. I think that's with the true fit type mask because they're quite, so, but these fit very nicely. Whereas the disadvantage with these if someone's got a beard and really the Dan O2 kit doesn't really cover that. Again, we've covered that on my boat O2 kit video, which is coming up shortly. So spoiler alert, this is a bit funny. They give you one pair of gloves. I mean, it's a bit silly. So what have I done? I've put a load of gloves in there, inside my plastic bags. I have at least five pairs. Dan, everyone's got gloves, can get gloves. I mean, you need a good staff. You know, if you've got a casualty and several people saying working on the casualty doing CPR because you've 
you, you, you get tired very quickly. You need more than one pair of gloves, right? Um, if you've got someone assembling the kit, they need gloves on. You need the person attending casualty with gloves on. So we have a pack of gloves. So that can go in there. Similarly, just before, I'll just put these in. Now with COVID-19, it's a good idea to have a pack of medical grade masks. So what else is on the kit? Two spare washers. We did replace the washer when we serviced it. You get two spare washers. So what I'm gonna do, put them in my accessory bag. We'll talk about this later. I'm just gonna put them in with a silica gel because they're in a separate bag. Okay, they also include in the kit a new rebreather mask. Just one of them. How do you replace it? If you use it or you do some trading, how do you replace it? What I've done, I've bought a load of extra masks. They cost nothing. I couldn't believe. I think I paid about a dollar each for these. Get extra bags and have a two, at least two in the in the box. What is very very useful comes with a an O2 slate which helps you in an emergency or say you've got a young rescue diver as O2 trained but it's been a while and he or she says oh, oh I don't know what to do. There's a quick refresh there because the most experienced qualified diver may be having to attend to the casualty in the first instance and you need the, the kit being put together. Hopefully not the most senior diver or qualified diver should be directing operations if possible but it all depends on what you've got to work with just going to lie that on top so when you open it's right there we get a dan oxygen on board sticker so we're just going to put that here so it means any diver who comes on the boat is automatically reassured that we have oxygen there we go and finally we get a dan usa sticker with the help number on. We're, as I say, we're covered by Dan Europe, but one thing that's interesting for my American viewers, the numbers changed, right? It used to be 684-8111, it's now 9111. I'm gonna put this sticker, and I'm also gonna make a sticker with the European number on. Because if I call up the European number and nobody answers, I'm sure Dan USA will provide assistance. And then we'll make another sticker with the Dan Europe details on so when we have an emergency we know who to call first and we know who to call second. This is another um, O2 service kit it comes with a full set of medical cards um, I ordered one of these so I got an extra rebreather mask an extra pocket mask and I can put this in my first aid kit and it's got the full set of Dan's first aid cards so these will go in our first aid kit and there's another O2 slate as well. Some of the more interesting stuff that I've got, I've made this up. So what I've done here is I've got a flow meter and I've connected it to a hose from an Omri breather mask. This will allow me regularly to check the flow of the regulator. I'll probably do it every six months. I want to make sure that 15 litres per minute is, is coming out. I have checked this one and that this said it was about 16. So I'm happy with that if it was less then it means we need to replace or service the regulator. And that can go in there like that. When I was researching this, this video and also um, preparing for my boat diving video, I was concerned that this at best gives you an hour's worth of oxygen. We're offshore, it can take us, we're a slow boat, eight knots, nine knots, if we, if we gun it 12, but it's still gonna take us four to five hours to get back and that's what I'm going to cover in detail in my uh, boat 02 kit video so I don't want to spoil it for you now but one of the things that I found on the Dan Europe site was this little let's call it bad boy so this is an adapter that we can put into a, a, a diving tank of nitrox or better still a cylinder of O2 this is just a small <laughs> cylinder that we we keep on the boat so we can transport people again we'll talk about this in more detail on the um boat o2 kit. but look here you know we immediately can go up to two hours on this tank so with this tank and that tank we've got three hours not enough for the diving we do but uh, enough for a lot of people on the journey back you could run people on this tank and then during transportation to the emergency facility switch over to the small tank so really really useful i've forgotten what i paid for it you can get these from the dan europe website highly recommended it just gives you a lot more versatility if you're working with a medical type oxygen regulator 
to use either high O2 nitrox or preferably oxygen in a, in a diving type cylinder with a din with a din valve so that goes in there right now let's talk about my accessory bag so what have we got in here we've got some um, normal white silica gel in there I'll just keep that in the bag because I had some samples we've got some markers we've got erasable markers we use that for the checklist which I'll talk about in a second and then we've got permanent markers what do we use the permanent marker pens for we use them to do the checks on our cylinder and this is something I prepared earlier this is my security tag easily broken which we're gonna when we close the box we're gonna use and it just says there 1st of February 21 BD checked it right we're a bit later than that now a couple of days I've got some spare silica gel and I've got some spare security tags these are very easy to, to find on the internet and the reason I prepare this first is because I'm gonna put these back in the box so how am I gonna write on there so right on there first right so we keep that one out I just want to go through I'm gonna fill this in when we finished my writing's terrible but here's you can see it on the screen now what we do every month will be a checklist the date checked by just the initials there's a record why do I do it with the erasable pen you can see there we can put Feb right we can tick tick and then next month we can just take it off obviously we've plastic capsulated this but that makes it really easy to use I filled in the in the checklist so that can just go in there on top so when someone opens they know it's been checked they haven't got to worry about it and they've got the O2 card we mentioned that earlier so all we've got to do now is replace the seal so let's have a look at the seal we did test it before and it was okay but we've got the new one let's get it changed and we haven't got to worry about it for a year or two again if you get the, um, the service kit from Dan every year you can get the one with the seal and change it it hardly costs anything extra now these are a bit tricky when they're new so we've got to because they can fall out so when you close it just hold it in place at the bottom for the first time just hold it there because it can drop out and then get it down and then and there you go a 1994 Dan O2 kit which I got for free made better than new and better than what Dan sells today I'm sorry to say that I hope Dan look at this video or people send it to them you know these extras Dan Europe has got lots of um, nice little accessories on there so look at both sites and you know upgrade your, your, your own O2 kits in a week's time we'll have the my other approach to O2 the one that I prefer for my boat and the diving that we do but I'm still keeping this on the boat you can never have too much oxygen if I go over the east coast or somewhere else diving or shore diving I can stick this in the car and I've got an hour's supply of oxygen for one casualty so all remains to do now is to put the security seal on there we go particularly if we're in a club environment or a dive school environment we know if anyone's tampered that's what they're called they're called tamper seals not or security seals we know if anyone's opened the box if that's missing we know we need to check everything when I was a young diving instructor we'd be doing rescue diver courses we'd open the box go to um, use the oxygen guess what no oxygen why because young dive instructors in the day is much more professional nowadays would have a hangover three four hours sleep so what would they do great hangover cure oxygen do not do it guys right or if you do do it go and get the bottle refilled and check your kit in making this video and in fact you know I was actually working on my boat O2 kit when I was donated that those of you who saw the part one will will know that I didn't want to throw this away I wanted to refurbish it these aren't cheap this cost I think it's six eighty three dollars or let's say seven hundred dollars plus you've got to ship it to where you are right it, it maybe for people in the West in America a dive instructor yeah would, would spend that money for a dive center sure I dive a lot in the developing world and there's some great dive masters and instructors and a lot of them can't afford to have an O2 kit like this so I got thought thinking and I was also talking to my fellow scuba tuber critter hunter about how do we 
make O2 available cost effectively and this was on my mind and when I was researching this and looking for stuff I found this little beauty I think it's around $30 and it's a little constant flow regulator which you can adjust typically in diving we use 15 liters per minute right that's the maximum it goes to so that's all we need so you can buy a couple of these for under $80 you can buy medical oxygen cylinders locally and Critter Hunter is going to find out the price for me in the Philippines which we're going to use as a case history fairly cheaply and a reasonable size uh, double the sort of 22 cubic foot we've got in there you then get a couple of pocket masks a couple of non-rebreather masks and I guess for under 150 200 bucks we will do a video on this and let you know the cost you've got a perfectly acceptable O2 kit yes you've got to figure out how to keep it dry and clean but that interested me that's why I just wanted to mention this this little baby I am going to be doing uh, a collaboration with Critter Hunter oh by the way please support Critter Hunter that's his job just making YouTube videos I've got a day job as well as this he's got some great merch on his Teespring shop the links in in the description below please support him just buy a t-shirt or something but anyway going back to this medical oxygen kit so I'll I'll probably send him this one and he can buy another one and then I'll I'll send him the, the accessories because I've got loads of non rebreather masks and I've got a, quite a few pocket masks now because I'd ordered a, a job lot from China very good quality so then they'll be ready to go that's it for this edition on my O2 journey I guess I'm really excited to show you what we've done for the boat it's a, it really is an O2 kit designed by divers for divers for use in diving conditions so thanks for watching my name is Brian Davis if you've liked what I've done give it a thumbs up if you don't like what I've done give me a thumbs down but if you do give me a thumbs down because you think I've done something wrong please put it in the comment below so I can respond and then correct what I've said we'll see you next time we've got some merch at last on Teespring and the reason I set it up was to donate funds to the Seahorse Trust from my Seahorse collection and for the, the lovers of the Coronet yacht their shirts there for you as well Thank you.